Hi, this is the Snowforce Event Winter and today I'm going to be showing you how to operate it, how to set it up and if required how to debug any problems that you might come across. The machine comes in two boxes. The bottom box contains the machine itself and this top box contains all the accessories. So if we open up the accessory box, inside the accessory box, on the underside of the lid we have a spare sock for the snow generator if you need it. We have a heater jacket for the snow fluid. We have the nozzle of the machine, which comes in two parts. This part and this curved section. We have a locating pin, which is used to set the angle of the nozzle. We have a cover for the uh, snow nozzle, uh, for when it's not in use. We have a daisy chain cable, which allows us to connect multiple machines together. We have the power lead, which is a Euro C form plug on one end and a UK 13 amp three pin plug on the other. We have an external thermostat and a little booklet here with the operating instructions. Okay, so having got out all the parts, if you just check that they're all there, and if anything's missing at all, then please get in contact with us straight away so that we can get a replacement part out to you. All our machines are inspected before they leave the mill, so it should be very unlikely that there will be anything missing. Okay, so now we're going to assemble the machine. The first thing to do is to attach the nozzle to the rear of the machine. Now it comes in two parts, the curved part and the straight section. So if we take the curved, curved section like this, um, what we want to do is to take the air hose and the fluid hose and thread them down through the middle. It's a little bit fiddly, but sure if you persevere you'll get there. So that slots together. We can then make sure that we can get this out of the other end. We've now got to connect it to the machine. So we push that onto there, like so. And we can take the fluid line and connect it here. Uh, just push it in, make sure it's pushed home really nice and tight. Um, just a quick tip when you come to dismantle this and you're taking them apart, pull the blue ring down and then pull the uh, tube out. It comes out very easily. Um, if you just tug on this, it won't come out. It's a self-locking connection. So, having assembled this part, we've then got to attach it to the machine. And what we do is we'll angle it round like this and pop it onto there. It's usually quite helpful if you've got two people to do this. Put that in, and this little metal bar here has to locate behind the plate. So you push it in like that and then spin it round. Okay, so that's it assembled. And then what you need to do is you've got your locking pin and you can just pop it into one of the holes. There are several holes around here so you can angle this in whichever direction you want it. If we spin the machine back round now, this way, we can take this connector, which is the heater for the uh, for the nozzle and pop that cover off back this in there and we click it down okay that's that next we have the external thermostat and that goes in next to it yep, twist push it in there you go and you can put that up on top of the machine or you can leave it on the floor If we spin the machine right to face forward now, the next thing we're going to do is to attach the drum with the fluid in and put a, pop it in its heated jacket. So we've got a 20 litre drum of snow business snow fluid and we're going to pop that into the heated jacket. So if you open up the jacket like so, take your drum, lift it in. 
undo the top, remove that, take the fluid line and place that into the barrel. Done that, screw the top down nice and tight. And then these covers come over like so, and like so, and that keeps the jacket all nice and snug. So this is the insulated line, and we've got two connections on this. We have a fluid connection, which we're going to pop in down here. And then above that, we've got the heater connection. So remove the dust cover, take the heater connection, pop it in. Only goes one way around. Push that in nice and firmly, and then click down the retaining clamp. And that's our fluid line connected. Finally, we have the power lead. And that goes on here, so hold it like so, pop, pop that on, and then the other end we can put into a 13 amp UK plug. Finally, when you're not using it, you've got this cover, and we can just pop that over the top here, and that's uh, very useful for stopping rain, unwanted debris, and other bits from going down inside the machine. And finally, we have the daisy chain cable. And if we're using multiple machines, and we want to trigger them all from the same machine, then down at the bottom here, we've got our in and out daisy chain connections. And we can pop those open. And, uh, the cable into the appropriate side in right and then this other end of this cable will attach to the next machine in the chain and that's it we're all set up ready to go so the next thing I'm going to show you is all of the different controls and how they work so on the front of the machine uh, we have a control panel in the top left here is the timer enable switch and this enables the 24 7 timer which I'll show you in a minute Next to it, we have the master and slave switch. Now this switch works in conjunction with the daisy chain cable. If you want this to be the master machine, you switch it to one. Um, if you want it to be a slave, you switch it to two. Um, what that means is if this is the master, then this machine will control the other machines in the chain. The other machines in the chain will need to be switched to two, indicating that they are slave machines. The switch next to this is on and off, and it's as simple as that. That's off, that's machine on. Below it, we have the power indicator light, and if the machine is powered, you will have a, a green light there. Below that is the fluid control valve, and this controls the flake size. Um, if you start by screwing the fluid valve all the way in, and then come out one and a half turns, that's usually a good place to start from. Underneath the lid, we have another control box. Here. Now you shouldn't really need to, um, to do anything with this. Um, we have uh, a trip, which will trip, obviously, if the machine uh, malfunctions. Next to that, we have the 24-7 timer controller. And then next to that are a series of relays and, um, and a thermostat. Again, you don't need to touch any of those. The 24-7 timer will be set by us before it leaves uh, Snow Business, or if a technician accompanies the machine, it will be set by the technician. You can change the timer settings if you want, and I'll talk about that in a moment. The only other thing to mention about the machine is, the machine is heated to prevent it from freezing in cold weather, but it does need to be switched on. So once the machine is switched on and set up, don't turn it off, especially if at night it's likely to fall below freezing. If you turn off the power to the machine, uh, then the machine will, will, will likely um, end up with frozen components and that could damage the machine. So remember, don't switch it off. So this is the external thermostat, um, which is plugged into the side of the machine. And what this does is it detects if the temperature falls below about two degrees centigrade. 
Now with this, this plugged in, the machine will actually stop operating below two degrees centigrade. And the reason for that is um, obviously the uh, snow, if it lands on the floor, will start to freeze and it could, it could con constitute a slip hazard. So this sensor will stop it from working below 2 degrees centigrade. If you want the machine to run below 2 degrees centigrade, then simply disconnect this external thermostat and the machine will continue to operate normally. But um, do assess the risk, uh, the slip hazard risk, before you disconnect this, this uh, thermostat. Okay, so... As I said previously, these machines will come out from us um, pre-programmed with the timing sequence that you have agreed with the sales staff. Should you wish to change the timing sequence for whatever reason, it will be necessary to reprogram the machine and for that you'll need one of these reprogrammed dongles. So if you contact sales and they will um, get one of these out to you. Now if, a t if one of our technicians is not with the machine, then you'll need to do it yourself and this is the process. So. In the control panel under the lid, you can see this um, uh, Muller time switch here. If you pop up the little L-shaped cover and very carefully flip out the connection on the dongle and then very carefully insert it into the end there. Don't force it in, the pins are very easily damaged. With the dongle in, the little screen will say key, uh, data key and for that you press OK. Now, it now says save data. Whatever you do, don't press OK. Because what will happen is that the program on the time switch will be programmed onto the dongle and the new program will be lost. So if you go press the plus key, it then says program time switch. If you press OK, the timer is now reprogrammed with the new program. It's worth mentioning that if you do this, if you reprogram this after the start time, so say you want the machine to start at 9 o'clock and go on until 5 o'clock in the afternoon, if you program this time switch before 9 o'clock in the morning, it will work perfectly well. If you program it after 9 o'clock in the morning, what will happen is, is your time sequence will start from the moment you remove the switch, uh, the key, sorry, the data key. So what you have to do... Um, for the first day you will be slightly out of sequence but when the machine stops at five o'clock on the subsequent days it will start again at nine o'clock as it should the other thing to mention is if you before you remove the key the timer enable switch which is the orange switch on the front panel if you flick that into the up position um, that then becomes the timer on position so when I remove the key and the program and the timer is programmed. If we want to disenable the timer, if we now flick the enable switch, the orange enable switch into the down position, the timer is disenabled. If we want to re-enable it, we push the orange switch in at the top, the timer is re-enabled. So that's how to reprogram the time switch. Okay, so there are a few faults that you might come across on this machine. Probably the most common is when people allow the machine to run out of fluid. <coughs> The machine should have fluid all of the time. If it runs out of fluid, then the pump runs dry, the pump can become damaged. Um, but that's usually only if it's left to run for a prolonged period of time. If you've forgotten and the machine's run out of fluid, then connect a new drum of fluid to the machine and connect it at the front. If for any reason it doesn't seem to be pulling the fluid through, then you can do a couple of quick things to help yourself out. So, close the lid down. Should be closed in normal operation anyway. Take your fluid drum place it up on top of the machine, then open the fluid valve wide open. Run the machine. Um, when the fluid starts to draw through, then release it, return the uh, fluid uh, control back down to where you want it. Normally that's about one and a half turns out from closed and, um, and you should all be ready to go. If the fluid is being pumped in the machine but there's no snow coming out, then what you want to do is just check um, around here at the nozzle that the fluid connection inside here has actually been connected properly and hasn't come loose and the fluid is merely just leaking out instead of getting to the sock. Um, the other thing uh, which you might come across is the machine fails to come on when it should do on the timer. Um, and if that's the case, just make sure that the timer select switch is in the correct position. Now, if you set the timer 
with the switch in the up position, um, which is how we do it before they leave here, then if the switch is in the down position, then the timer will be off and the machine won't operate when it's meant to. So just flick it in at the top and the timer should come on. Um, other than that, if you get any other problems, then just give us a ring and we'll see what we can do to help you out. So when you're finished with the machine, the disassembly process is the reverse of the assembly process. Make sure you take all of the parts, put them all back into the accessories box and close the clamps. And, um, so, and that's all there is to it.